your character at that moment in time. Lovely, lovely work. And relax. But I'd like to see in the first monologues, can um, two groups work on preparing their Mrs. Burn, Sheila, suffragette organisations upstairs. I'd like to see the other monologues and then we'll sort over so we can move straight on. So Vanessa's group, if you'd like to go upstairs, and um, another group, I don't know the bridge. <coughs> Clara? Okay. Right, the others, can you come and sit down? Who would like to, Jane, if you wanted to go first in the monologue? So if the rest of you would like to just grab a chair and come and sit over here. Um, Jane, can you do your monologue on the front monster? You can use a stool if you want, or a, a smaller box if you need it. <coughs> Yeah. 
I borrowed, but I borrowed his money. Of course I'll, I'll find a way of paying him back. <laughs> Somehow, but um, oh, a dreadful mess. How can I got myself in?
very, very good for you. Excellent. Well done. Can you send the next group from the street? Thank you. Yes. 
very, very good, Vanessa. Well done. Alanya.
She doesn't show me affection in that way. I really felt affection for Daisy. I feel like terrible now. Thank you. 
see why you just can't open your eyes. They are open. They're not. You only see what you want to see. Not the world beyond this family. Yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. I thought that at the beginning we saw those smiles and the um, obviously expecting to like this person, that it would be someone who she um, would be her sort and the smile was there, but it's a smile with the mouth without the eyes, which I thought was very well done. But then that veneer changing as soon as we hear where you actually met this person, the subject. And I, what about those undertones that came out? Yes, exactly. Try exactly. So that knowing always that in society we are not true, there are things that we say, but we still these barbed comments coming out. And I loved the way that your voice changed and when you said it with a very low voice. And that was came across and shared with the audience, but it was very much um, on a different key to what was presented to the so, guests. Very good. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to say about it? I thought that worked extremely well. I thought Bonnie trying, desperately trying to keep the etiquette alive. And we could see, though, in Alanya's earnestness, how Sheila has changed through the entire Very good. What about Lottie, Jenny, Megan and Rosie? Extremely funny. Wonderful humour. Over, this subject again, overpowering, confident, brash. These are a lot of contextual knowledge of the time. I thought that was excellent. About the trousers. I really, I really love the way Rosie has acted everything out. And like the apartment, and, you know, the thing is, it's just so you know, confident and everything. Yes, and absolutely. It's really well done that Mr. and Mrs. Bowen stayed sitting down. Yes. They still trying to go dog and stay there, so they couldn't really have much to say. Yes. And little things, those details like sitting, those were all so symbolic, the way that she would sit on the side of a chair, not to conform. And how shocked Mr. and Mrs. Burling were. And also, I loved every time you touched them on the back and you could just see Mr. Burling or Mrs. Burling flinch that this is not the way that we behave. Nobody touches me. You know, so that was very, very... Especially when uh, Rosie shook Lottie's hand, just to see Lottie. To see yes! Lottie. You may think. Absolutely, absolutely. If someone <coughs> takes their hand in such a harsh way, it's just not the way a lady shakes hands. Lovely, lovely details. Very good indeed. Clara and Emily. I think the relationship between the two could really be, you know, that it was sort of breaking down as to what was happening with the perspective. Yes. And there was so much tension in it. So, so much tension. Mm. Emily was very physical in her nervousness. And Clara's incredible composure, but you could feel this tension underneath, but that she is, has been brought up to maintain this calm composure the whole time. So there's a duality there going, yeah, isn't there? Yes. I really, really like the way that I think Emily said something like, what if Gerald really marry me? Yes. Does he want to marry me? Yes. Like, yes. Really like that. And I really think that's really good, because when, when you know the rest of the play, and like we've been doing things where um, she learned, it's just like, well, now I don't want to marry Gerald. Yes. So it really shows that the change that she's got to go through. She's going to go through, exactly. And at this point, the point that you two chose, um, Mrs. Burling has no idea the way that she's going to be brought into it no. or what's happened to Eric. So she still very much feels that they have nothing to worry about and that they can, they can get through this, they can maintain their dignity. Good, very, very good. What about Fran and Mian?
Yes. Yes. We try that comes third floor. There's no one character. Exactly. Absolutely. 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 She was the miserable sort of thing. Yes. As far as she's concerned, she has a she's of no consequence. Why are you talking to her? Yeah, I loved that. I thought that was that again was good period detail. Yes, Rosie. Yes. As the child, and you were to stay here until you were prepared to behave nicely to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I think Mrs. Bergen was threatened yes. by what she had to say. Yes. She was standing up to her, it was so scary for her. Exactly, so she couldn't serve it any longer. So she needed to leave. <coughs> it was all too near her to disturb. Absolutely. Excellent girls, a very good lesson. Thank you very much. Um, when you're ready, individual minds in a character of your choice. And off you go.
having what has been an extremely pleasant meal at a certain level. Obviously there are underlying tensions which are visible and certainly can be felt. There's the tension of that Mrs. Burley feels that her husband should behave in a way that would impress Gerald. She must always at the back of her mind be worried that perhaps Gerald might back out of this engagement. I think she's very aware that for Gerald's family, Lord and Lady Croft, um, they are not up to the path. And they are very aware of that snub that Lord and Lady Croft have not attended this engagement party. And of course they are pretending it's not a snub at all. We've got the underlying tension of Eric. He drinks a bit too many. Of course, his mother doesn't like to admit this to herself. Um, his father likes to think lads will be lads. But it is very much definitely there. And he feels like he doesn't feel to fit in with this family. Sheila, of course, is trying to make everything go as well as she can. And she's desperately trying to placate everybody and keep everyone happy and impress her young man. Gerald. Um, of course has come to this family and does care very deeply, I think, now. Um, I admire and respects Sheila. I don't know whether he's in love with her, but he does admire her and has decided she would make a decent wife. Um, and of course, Mr. Burley, however much he tries to go along with what his wife wants, he can't help but still be himself. And there's the way that he behaves. And of course, there must be perhaps a slight rebellion at times in him as well. He doesn't want to always do the dumb thing and the correct etiquette. And of course, we've got Edna, the invisible servant, who is aware of everything that's going on and yet has to pretend that she isn't. Okay, now whenever you want to join the action, as whatever character you put your hand up, I will say freeze, you go and stand behind the person you want to replace, and that person then comes and sits down. And action. Well, Gerald, nearly finished. You and she will be having many more of this out of fire, I hope, after you. Married? And basement. Dessert. Yes, well, I'll hurry up and do it. Well, this is not going well then. Certainly is that she a very good meal, I must say. And have a drink. Eric, sit up at the table, will you ask?
and show very clearly what the characters are and their relationships between each other. Two volunteers, please.
Sheila? I wonder what flowers I should have at the wedding. And I have two volunteers to sculpt one quickly. Any improvements on your body? And then when you finish, can you just give us a quick rundown on why you've made the changes you have?
So I'm 
Wahnsinn.
Yes, Eric. And that's the door. That's 
Then don't you see? There's still no proof it was really the same girl. He might have showed you the photograph of any girl who appeared applied to the committee. And how do we know she really was Eva Smith or Daisy Bennett? Gerald's head right. He could have used a different photograph each time and we'd be none the wiser. We may all be recognizing different girls. Exactly. Did he ask you to identify a photograph there? No. He didn't need a photograph by the time he got round to me. But obviously it must have been the same girl I knew who went round to see Mother. Why must it? She said she had to have help because she wouldn't take any more stolen money. And the girl I knew told me that already. Even then, that may have been all nonsense. I don't see much nonsense about it when a girl goes and kills herself. You a lot may be letting yourselves out nicely, but I can't. Nor can Mother. You did her in all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't be in such a hurry to put yourself in the court. That interview with your mother could have been as much of a put-up job. Like all this inspector business. The whole damn thing could have been a piece of bluff. How can it? The girl's dead, isn't she? What girl? There were probably four or five different girls. That doesn't matter to me. The one I knew is dead. Is she? How do you know she is? That's right. You've got it. How do we know any girl? Now answer that one. Let's look at it from this fellow's point of view. We're having a little celebration here and feeling rather pleased with ourselves. Well, the first thing he has to do is work us into a shop. Then after that he can bluff us all the time. So he starts right off. A girl has just died, on her way to the infirmary. She drank some strong disinfectant, died in cavity. All right, don't pile it on. There you are, you see? And that's what we have to do, shake us at once, and then start questioning us until we don't know where we are. Oh, let's admit it. He had the laugh of us, all right. He could laugh his head off. I knew it were really a hoax. I'm convinced it is. No police inquiry, no one girl that this happened to, no scandal. And no suicide. We can settle that at once. How? By bringing up the infirmary. Either there's a dead girl there, or there isn't. It will look a bit queer, won't it? I don't mind doing it. And if there isn't, anyway, we'll see.
soon as she entered, you had made your assumptions, you made your decisions, your prejudices were clear. So you weren't giving her a chance, whereas Maggie's character... It was as soon as she said her name was Mrs. Burley. You decided about that, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. Lovely. And it's lovely to see that image of you coming back and picking up the disinfectant. And obviously the thoughts are there and they're freezing that point. That was much that was better than continuing to actually drinking it because it, it wouldn't necessarily happen straight after that, but it's it, the thoughts are building up. The thought about suicide was there. Very good. Okay, the next scene. The beginning of Act One. And it flowed so well. It flowed extremely well. I thought it was very clear the way that you froze and then came down to this front rostra. It fitted in beautifully to act out. And, and doesn't that help us to imagine exactly what, what happened between Eric and Carl? And what about, sorry, Eva? And what about Eva, the way that she sat on that stool at the beginning? She was very timid. So vulnerable. So naive. So naive. And her voice, I thought you've got the voice so beautifully because it was quiet, unassuming, but also scared at the same time, um, but feeling like what choice did she have? So alone, so ultimately alone in the world. And what about um, Eric's gradual progression in his drunkenness? Oh, it was interesting. Very cleverly done. Very, very clever, yes. And we also thought that the rostra, having this bit lower, really helped. Yes. No, it worked really well. We wanted to measure what by the family. Yes. And the walk home was wonderful just to use that come down steps and come down to the front door. Yes. And I think the only time Eva came out of her shell a little bit was when she had something to drink. Yeah. So she got on, she, yeah, she was laughing and she was happy. And also we heard her bitterness when she said, they bloody pardon me. You know, for a second it came out, which was the effect of having whiskey as well. Yes, very, very good. And what about that? The, the threat and then the, the um, actual violence which was frozen at that point. I mean, what did you think about that? Drunk too much. He just drunk too much, but it was very, very clear. That was all we needed to see, wasn't it? But that struggle, and then Eric, no, and then the way that we pushed her, he could, it, that was enough said, the rest left to our imagination, but we know what's going to happen. And I thought that the, the meeting afterwards, the awkwardness and the look on Eva's face, when um, Eric doesn't recognise her. And, you know, that, that was beautifully done, wasn't it? Absolutely. He treated her like a piece of meat, and now he doesn't even remember what she's been through. Yes? Yes. 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 Yeah, lovely, lovely choice. Okay, and um, what about the way that um, the inspector was played? It's sort of been the chef always there to stop anything and always having his say. Oh, you know, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. the colours as well. Very, very straight. Very straight. They don't want to hear any excuses. Just how offended yes. he was without shouting over the top of the He had the power. And the smell yes. in his voice was really effective. Yeah. We yes. thought a lot about how um, the inspector would say the last word stop. Yes. yes. And the way that Mrs. Berlin was so clearly trying to avoid any responsibility. I thought that that came across extremely well when you came back in. Yes. And when um, Sheila said thank you to Edna, Like a puzzle. 
more and more sure that they're all let off. Yes. Can you actually see the Yeah. When they stood up to go. 